Welcome to the Dr. Tibbs Show. This is a new and exciting medical show where we are putting your health back into your hands as the patient. And on this show, we'll be discussing various medical conditions and issues. And to assist us with this, we'll be having highly skilled and highly experienced medical experts. Today, we'll be discussing cataracts. And my guest is Dr. Johan Lambrecht. He's an ophthalmologist working in private and he has experience in treating and managing cataracts. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Lambrecht, how are you? Hi there, Dr. Tebbs. I'm very well, thank you. And thank you so much for having me on the show. No, thank you. The World Health Organization says that majority of patients who are affected by cataracts are those over the age of 50. This is our elderly population. And they also quote that um, it's about 94 million people who are affected by this. So it's a, a lot of people who are affected. So what is a cataract? All right, so like you said, cataract is definitely a major cause of visual impairment globally. And it is something that's important to understand and uh, as patients take responsibility for and know how to manage it. Mm -hmm. I think the easiest way to explain what it is, is by looking at the similarities between a camera and the eye. So most of today's smartphone users might think that a camera is that little thing at the top <laughs> corner mm. uh, made for taking selfies, but actually, you know, cameras are more complex uh, pieces of equipment and you suddenly get very big cameras and the eye definitely qualifies as a, as a high quality complex camera okay. and cameras have lenses at the front mm -hmm. and then a clear pathway for the light to travel and then on the inside of the back the camera has the film which captures the light and turns it into the image that we want to see mm -hmm. and similarly if we look at the image over there the eye has multiple lenses at the front and then at the back it has a film. The front lens is actually the outer shell of the eye and that has a special name. We call it the cornea. Okay. Behind that is the colored part of the eye with a little black dot in and we call that the iris and the pupil. And that controls the amount of light that goes into the eye. Behind that we have the lens and that doesn't have a special name, we just call it the lens. It does the last little bit of focusing uh, for the light to then reach the retina in, as a clear image. The retina is that back layer that you're pointing to and that's essentially the film of the eye as a camera. And that then captures the light uh, finally as a clear image and sends it to the brain for processing. Okay, so coming from that explanation then, what is a cataract? When that second lens that I refer to, the lens, the when okay. that turns dull, okay. we give it a special name. We call it a cataract. But it's one and the same thing. It's the eye's own lens. Like I said, it has to let the light through and focus it into an image on the retina. But when it gets opacities, that means dull spots uh, or dark spots, or it changes its color into a darker color, when that happens, the light can't pass through clearly as a focused image and we then call the lens a cataract. Okay, thank you for that explanation. So what causes a cataract? All right, inside the lens mm -hmm. is a very uh, specialized collection of proteins. Now I think most of us know about proteins, it's what we get in meat and eggs and legumes and beans and yeah. so forth. So think of the protein in the lens as being similar to the protein in an egg white. If we look at that image, we can see that that eye has okay, little whitish gray patches on the inside. Mm -hmm. And I think most people know that when a cataract gets advanced, uh, a, p a patient might get that little white dot in their eye. It is simply those clear proteins, like an egg white, mm -hmm. that then become damaged and they lose their clarity. So think of when you cook the egg, okay. the egg white goes from clear to being white. And not that we look at rotten eggs often, but actually the same thing happens. If you were to take a rotten egg, mm -hmm. that egg white won't be clear anymore. It would have changed color and turned a whitish or a grayish or some other color. So damage to the lens is what causes the cataract. Now obviously there are multiple causes uh, or multiple reasons for the lens to become damaged. It can be something like years of exposure to UV light mm -hmm. uh, from the sun and not wearing eye protection uh, or maybe even people that have high UV exposure type jobs like uh, glass blowers with those um, specialized flames or welders perhaps uh, or years of smoking for instance uh, causing reduced oxygen and increased oxidative damage to the lens or it can be something really acute like 
getting poked in your eye with a sharp wire and that then hits the lens. Mm -hmm. The lens can instantly turn into a cataract. And there are lots of, of causes in between. So uh, certain metabolic and endocrine conditions like diabetes, for instance, that accelerates cataract development. Mm -hmm. uh, inflammation inside the eye, that's a condition called uveitis, that can damage the lens and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then something that a lot of people don't know is that you can actually be born with a cataract. So if there was damage to those proteins during the developmental phase, um, you know, in the uterus of the mother mm. uh, due to infections or metabolic or endocrine conditions, again, uh, that can also damage those clear lens proteins and cause a child to actually be born with a cataract or develop it at a very young age. Okay, so from what you have clearly explained is that a cataract can happen th in more than just the elderly. Exactly. elderly. So in essence, what you're saying is that young people, elderly people, you know, babies can even have cataracts. All right, so tell me, um, how do you treat a cataract? All right, so the aim of the surgery is to replace that dull lens that we can see there mm -hmm. with a new clear lens. And the only way to do that is surgically. Okay. Up to this point, we can't cause a lens to be renewed inside the eye from cells, you know, like there is research looking at stem cells and so forth to, to get a new clear lens to grow. But right now, the best we can do is to take out that dull lens, which we now call the cataract, and replace it with a new lens, which is usually just a clear piece of plastic. And it sounds simple mm -hmm. and inexpensive, but it's a very, very advanced technology that goes into developing that lens. Okay. So what we do is we go into the eye through two or three very small cuts at the junction or the intersection between that clear part, the cornea, and the white part of the eye. That's how we get access to the eye and to the lens. Mm -hmm. We use medication to open that little black spot up, the pupil, and then we can see the front surface of the lens. Next, we remove the front cover of the lens, which we'll show in the video soon again. It's mm -hmm. called the capsule. The whole lens is actually surrounded by a thin membrane called the capsule. So okay. we remove that capsule and mm -hmm. now we can get access to those dull proteins inside the lens capsule. We suck them out in various ways. Most commonly we use ultrasound energy to break up that cataract dull proteins mm -hmm. and then we suck it out or we call it aspiration. Um, we suck it out of the eye and that leaves that whole capsular space for the injection of a new clear lens into the eye. That's usually made of a flexible kind of uh, very high grade and clear plastic that is folded up into an injector, injected into the eye and then it will naturally open itself up in the capsule and it's got little stabilizing legs called haptics mm -hmm. that keeps it in place and the capsule heals around it and that lens stays there for the rest of your life. And that's how we treat cataracts. Beautifully explained. I couldn't explain it better myself. Yeah, so now, so someone at home is listening to this and saying, okay, Doc, your, ex your operation sounds pretty harmless. It's straightforward. But in actual fact, what are the complications that can happen? All right, so that is the harsh reality of, you know, life mm. is that absolutely anything can go wrong. Okay. Cataract surgery is literally, statistically speaking, one of the safest, if not the safest procedure in all of medicine. Mm. And there have been tremendous technological advances uh, over decades to help us get to that point. So even though it, it sounds harmless and the majority of cataract procedures are really safe and successful, and we're talking the vast majority, mm -hmm. there still are complications. So. We typically divide complications into minor and major complications. Okay. Minor complications are actually quite common. Here we're talking about a little bit of bruising or bleeding around the outside of the eye or blurry vision directly after the operation, maybe a dull ache and some light sensitivity or a scratchy eye. These are normal uh, healing responses due to the surgery that we have just done and mm. one can expect that. And that's self-limiting. We use anti-inflammatories and antibiotics and lubricant drops to then help the eye to settle down. Major complications, thankfully, like I said, are really mm -hmm. rare. Probably the most common and one of the most com uh, important complications is when we are unable to put a new lens into the eye. And that is usually due to damage 
to that delicate little capsule that the lens has to go into. Okay. That capsule at the back is about five micrometers thick. That is five one thousandths of a millimeter. Sure. So it's a very thin, delicate little layer attached with tiny little ligaments or attachment to the inside of the eye. So the, the exactly. little ones, yeah. Okay. We call those the zonules. Yeah. Okay. So when any one of those structures become damaged, we lose the support uh, for the new lens to go into the eye mm. and in most cases we are still able to correct that during the procedure by putting stabilizing components into the eye and putting the lens either into the capsule of the lens or in front of the capsule there are various ways to overcome that problem but occasionally we need to stop without putting in a lens and come back later and put in a special type of lens that is designed to be attached by itself to the inside of the eye. In other words, it doesn't need that capsular support. So that's probably uh, the most common and one of the most important complications of cataract surgery. Probably the most destructive uh, major complication is something called endophthalmitis. That is a severe infection of the liquid cavity inside the eye. So that whole gel filled space behind the lens would then okay. become infected and filled with bacteria and white blood cells and other inflammatory components and that can cause massive damage to the inside of the eye. Once again if that is detected immediately mm -hmm. that would normally mean a day or two after the surgery it can be uh, amended. One can still remove all that inflammatory and infectious liquid and replace it with clear liquid and treat the eye with antibiotics. So the key really in managing this complication is early detection and awareness of the signs and symptoms of a pos possible post-operative infection. Mm -hmm. There are other major complications like uh, serious bleeding behind the retina or the layer that follows on the retina called the choroid. Although with the newer techniques of cataract surgery those have become exceedingly rare and the rate of people actually losing their vision and mm -hmm. going blind after cataract surgery uh, are really exceedingly low. Okay, all right. So from what you said, just to summarize, it sounds like you can either have to have a second operation mm -hmm. or you get an infection or you can have a bleed, basically. Yes. So let's say patients is like, okay, doc, I've heard you. I actually don't want to have this operation. Mm -hmm. I mean, what can they expect? What will they experience if they don't have the operation for the cataract? All right, so cataracts will eventually cause blindness. Mm -hmm. But the wonderful thing is that it is in most cases not permanent. So you do get types of cataract that will cause potential permanent blindness if, for instance, the cataract becomes very big and swollen, it can cause high pressure in the eye, um, and that then can cause permanent damage. But even a very advanced cataract can usually still be treated and the vision can recover back to a very good level. So the patient would typically experience initially just a loss of, of contrast. Um, and that can be very hard to explain or define, but it's typically that one would struggle to differentiate between different shades of gray, for instance, okay. or colors that are close to one another, like red and maroon, or uh, beige and yellow. And especially in low light conditions, these things would then become more difficult. And then the vision eventually becomes more and more blurry. The the common experience of a cataract that starts in the middle of the lens is something called glare. So there if you have a light source coming from the front, so let's say for instance your reading lamp is in front of you or you're driving at night and there's a truck coming from the front, you might then see that light being scattered and cause this discomfortable uh, uncomfortable spread of light um, that really then uh, causes degradation of the visual quality in the rest of the image. Uh, one can also experience changes in your lens strength. So we call that refractive change. In some people, a cataract might be quite clear, but they all of a sudden become very nearsighted. And that's because of the, chain, the, the hardness of the lens changing and it then bends the light more or less. And all of a sudden you might find that you need your glasses to be upgraded every six months or every year or more than you used to do because they just don't work anymore. And so there's a combination of these factors that come together in the initial patient experience and the blurring and the cloudiness and the glare, all of that gradually gets worse and worse and worse 
until you get to a point where you can really see nothing. And by nothing we mean light only. So if someone were to shine a very bright light into your eye, you would still see the presence of light, but you won't see any detail. Mm -hmm. So think of literally closing your eye and holding a flashlight in front of your eye. You would see, okay, something has changed, but other than that, Nothing. nothing. You won't see just normal objects moving, you won't be able to differentiate much color and so forth. That is the gradual patient experience. So one r reaches a point where the cataract will cause blindness, mm -hmm. the operation might cause blindness. Mm -hmm. And we call that the risk-benefit ratio. So thanks to the safety of cataract surgery, even in pretty hard and advanced cataract surgery, there is usually an acceptable risk-benefit ratio where the risk of leaving the cataract is higher in terms of causing blindness mm -hmm. than the risk of doing the cataract surgery. You have a higher chance there of restoring your vision than of losing your vision. And that's how we justify doing cataract surgery and in fact any medical treatment. Mm, no, I agree with you. And what you've explained, I love that you know risk be, risk benefit ratio. Exactly. Love it because it makes sense. Yes. So the patient stands more to gain from removing the cataracts exactly. than actually losing because yes. of the safety of the operation. Exactly. Okay, so the operation is done. Yes. We're done now. How long does it take to recover? So. That is my favorite response to, to that question is how long is a piece of string, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it, every person is different. You mm. always have to remember that every patient is, is unique mm -hmm. and you might have a unique surgical experience. You might have a unique set of major or minor complications. You have your unique genetics. Um, that is the, the information that you're born with in your cells and that determines how how fast you heal, mm -hmm. how much inflammation you, de uh, you develop. Inflammation mm -hmm. is the body's response to any injury, whether it's a punch or an operation or a flame. Inflammation is the body's response to that. Okay. So some people get very severe inflammation, they take longer to heal and so forth. So it would typically be divided into stages. So your immediate post-operative recovery, yes. the, the scratchiness, mm -hmm. um, perhaps a, a increase in pressure inside the eye, um, those things should settle within hours to days. Okay. And they can be managed if they are severe, uh, for instance, with a contact lens for scratchiness or a drop or tablets for high pressure inside the eye. Then you have your, your normal healing response, which normally takes days to weeks. And that is a little bit of sensitivity to light, maybe intermittent redness, uh, fluctuating blurriness. Those things tend to settle over days to weeks. Mm -hmm. And then if there are longer term issues afterwards, it would either mean there was some sort of surgical complication okay. or the patient has a complex healing response, which is not uncommon. So people with autoimmune conditions or eye conditions like uveitis or people who may have had previous trauma, uh, someone who may have needed a special type of lens that gets attached to the inside of the eye with stitches and so forth, one can expect that to take a little bit longer to settle fully to, uh, until we get to the point of best corrected visual acuity. And what we mean by that is yes. everything is settled, you go for your final glasses test and your vision is the best that it could possibly be. And then it's important to remember that sometimes a cataract is so dense that one can't fully exclude other problems inside the eye. So you might have a scar on the inside of your eye, uh, eye on the mm. retina, which even though your surgery went perfectly well and you recovered quickly, you still can't see well because there is another problem with the eye. We always try to exclude other issues like that before the operation so that we know what to expect, but it's not always possible. So there are all these factors that come into play and it's really the patient needs to be uh, managed and explained to in a, in a customized way, in an individual way, according to the health of their eye and their body overall, as best as possible. And yes. occasionally, unfortunately, we get surprises, but the aim is to, to avoid those surprises and really know what we're aiming for. Mm -hmm. So my favorite question, patients always ask, doctor, will I need glasses after this operation? What's your answer? So, no answer, especially when you <laughs> ask me a question, no answer is straightforward just because there are so many variables, yeah. right? The lenses that we implant today, 
Mm -hmm. The majority of those lenses will focus at one point. That means you need to choose for each eye where do you want to see the clearest without any glasses. Okay. All right. That means at a distance we refer to six meters or more as distance vision or far vision. So driving, perhaps if you have a big lounge, uh, that would be watching television, walking outside, walking the dog, looking at nature and so forth. Mm -hmm. Then we have what we call intermediate, which is your indoor activities aside from reading. And reading is the distance that we refer to as near, mm -hmm. near vision. That's typically about 40 centimeters. Okay. Now, You'll notice I mentioned three main distances yes. and we only have two eyes. Mm -hmm. So we have to choose. Do we want both eyes to be for distance? Then we'll need glasses to read. Yes. Do we want both eyes to be for reading distance? Mm -hmm. Then we'll need glasses to see far. Okay. We can make one eye far and one eye near and most people's brains, the visual processing system in the brain, will accept that just fine. It gives them wonderful spectacle independence. But not everyone will. And mm -hmm. sometimes you might even go back and, and need to change that new lens that you put in, change the strength of that lens so that both eyes then are for near or for far and the patient wears glasses for everything else. There's also a type of lens called a multifocal lens. That lens has two or three built-in lenses. It means one lens can focus the light in two or three different places. It, it, there's always a trade-off. Nothing is for free because mm -hmm. the lens only has one set of light to work with and it has to divide that light then into those two or three different images. So each of those images might be clear but they will usually lose a little bit of contrast uh, or clarity or you might need slightly better light to see as well as you would have needed with a non-multifocal lens or what we call a monofocal lens, a lens that just focuses in one plane. Mm -hmm. So there are ways to get around the, the, the need to wear glasses afterwards but the majority of people will need some sort of spectacle correction for at least one lifestyle related distance, mm. so near or far, um, after cataract surgery even. Thank you Dr. Lambra for that explanation. We are now going to watch an interview of a patient who has undergone the same process that we have spoken about. Well, I, I am Victor Kumalo and well one experience that I had was when I was trying to renew my license and you know those kinds of things where they say and I discovered that there was an optician around the corner. This wasn't really what she makes a lot of money because all they say, Baba, we've tried everything. And that guy was very lenient with me, making me go through some steps. And then there's just no way. All these years I've driven without classes. And all of a sudden I've got to go to an optician. Checks my eyes, says, Baba, you're better. So now you'll get your license, but it must be with and I can tell you it was quite frustrating one time I, I was using my daughter's car driving towards Randfontein and I hit a very very bad uh, hole in the, in the road oh I tell you I damaged two tires and then from then I said I'm not driving for now until I get over this situation so that, those are some of the frustrations that one goes through in terms of your eyes. Yes, finally, finally uh, that optician gave me a letter to say you must go to the hospital so they can check your eyes and all that. This is when I, I met, uh, I, I phoned uh, around and then I was diagnosed by Dr. Dr. C.O.B. and uh, the crowd to say, no, you have a cataract that needs to be removed. Well, you get jittery because you are not too sure about the, the procedures and everything else. You don't know what's going on. Mm. I remember when, when, I, I, when I went there for that test and all that, this glare was a, a serious thing because they shine those lights into your eyes and uh, all of that. I'd, I'd, I was not prepared for that. Coming back, 
was a hassle because I'd not even arranged for anybody to pick me up. So it was quite, quite a challenge. So yes, you get jittery about that. And needless to say, you still want to read and still want to mm. do what you do mm. every day. Mm. But you cannot fully do it. Mm. But then I discovered that no, it was actually my right eye which was giving me problems. Mm. But then as time went on, I discovered that my left eye maybe is working over time, I don't know. So it, it tends to be weaker as well. Truly, it is a kind of a, a nerving situation when you think about it before it happens. I ask quite a lot of questions, how long does this take and all of that, those kinds of things. Uh, then I was told oh, the procedure is very simple because the people have really uh, taken care of, they understand the, the, the technology. But for you, this is your body. Mm. This is a, a limb that's got to be dealt with in your body and it is affecting you. So there were concerns about that, to say how is this going to happen? And of course, waking up and finding, hey, okay, by the way, there are certain things you cannot do the way you used to do them at that point in time. It's, 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 uh, it, it's not necessarily the easy thing, especially because it's your first experience. You don't know what's going on. But I, I think, in a way, I had an idea when, when they did the, the diagnostic procedure that these guys know what they're doing and they were professional. Of course, you still get teaching, you don't know what's going to happen. But another thing that I really enjoyed was, I don't know if this is what they do, I hope they do, but they explain the procedure to me fully. They give you those drops to try and dilate your pupil. And mine, I mean, I was sitting there for I had four episodes of, of drops and drops. They were saying, my eye is not dilating as it should. Just the numbing the eye, you know the term for that, numbing the eye so there will be nothing. You are not going to feel anything. I've heard people saying the most, uh, the most painful thing there is that injection. <laughs> I'm not scared of needles necessarily, but that, that, that injection is is, uh, <laughs> is stingy. It stings. Trust me. That they put on on your. On <laughs> Coming back to the actual operation. When I got out of there, yes, I, I do experience pain. Yeah, but then coming back now, I'm slowly beginning to regain the use of my of my right eye. You know, uh, somebody said, "Now, now you are giving given copious drops of 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 of, of uh, eye medication that you're going to put in four times a day." <laughs> it's quite a challenge, but at the same time, I feel it is important. Uh, of course, I've had to use sunglasses to be sure that because one of the challenging things is facing the glare. It can really mess you up, but. I feel this this is something that has to be done. But I can recommend the same thing to other people who are going through that. Rather earlier than later. later. Yes. Well, I can tell you, uh, I'm all praised for those guys. I can tell you, and I think the technology has really been mastered. They, they do such a great thing. But I really recommend that people and take it up with them and say we want to make things right. Thank you so much Reverend Kumala for that in-depth personal account of your experience going through a cataract operation. And yeah, Dr. Lambrecht, what is your parting message for our viewers at home? You know, Dr. Tebbs, no one should go blind. Mm. And I still hear of people who said my grandfather went blind from age. Mm. And this is not normal. Going blind is not normal. Mm. So that is why we encourage people to go for visual screening, either to an optometrist or an ophthalmologist, to detect problems early on. And also if people are already blind and they thought it was just normal, 
let someone have a look, let an eye care professional have a look because mm. it might actually be treatable like cataracts. So don't just accept it as a normal change in age, look after your eyes and get those screening tests done. Uh, the sooner you get a baseline the better and that will then determine your need for subsequent follow-ups and hopefully we can maintain good vision in everyone for the rest of their lives. Thank you so much, Dr. Lambrecht. You know, I love the way you explained everything in this interview. And uh, thank you very much to you viewers at home for also joining us on this segment. And I hope you have a better understanding of what cataracts is, are, basically. And so I want to say thank you so much. And until next time, may you stay safe, be blessed, and remember, your health is in your hands.